Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Javier in the Air. This is it. This is the final episode of Season 2, episode number 46, if you've been uh, monitoring the numbers, which I have. So, it's going to be a great one. I might have a little something uh, around Christmas Day, uh, something that I did last year that I may do again this year. Uh, I hope to see if maybe I can make it a tradition, uh, but it's going to be something just a quick shot type thing. So... For those of you who may not be familiar, this is this has been my season two. So season two, uh, I got involved with a lot of different things, trying to get things throughout the year, um, and so uh, a lot of the stuff that we did, that I did uh, this year, in a nutshell, uh, we had Snowpocalypse in 2021. Uh, I made it onto the uh, news because of it. Uh, to talk a little bit about how uh, I lost power but only for about a day uh, and then talking about the, the crew was out here working on it because uh, we're part of the Senior Assisted, assisted Living Center down the street so they have to keep us on the grid and they have to keep it with as much power as, as soon as they could uh, so lucky for us uh, in my neighborhood uh, with my sister lives down the way we were able to have both power and water without any issue. However, the people in Austin, which I'm in Cedar Park, if you don't already know, and I talk a lot about it, on the other side of the street, on the other side of uh, 620, is considered Austin. So Austin lost power throughout most of the city, and they lost water through a lot of the city. So my brother, Brother Rob, that I talk about all the time, was having to come over and fill up water jugs and water... Uh, water chests and everything he could to take water back to his house which is only like seven eight miles away from here uh and get that done so that was uh kind of interesting for him so um let's see we also did uh here at javier of the air we were also uh hitting a lot of different um uh, businesses and a lot of different uh, drinking and uh, places establishments uh, so to say uh, we hit the red horn uh, a couple of times we went out for a couple of flight nights we hit uh, Austin Beer Works we also hit um, a couple of other places that I'm, I'm going down the list here uh, we also got to see some businesses uh, we actually did a couple of, of interviews I know it's hard to believe because you usually just see this ugly mug all the time but uh, we you know we got to do a salon vibe and we got to uh, hit a couple of the um, uh, places here and around that uh, we were able to get a couple of interviews with uh, we were able to we went to Meanwhile Brewery. We did uh, a lot of stuff with Farmer and Neighbor James and Farmer and Neighbor Zyda Pavlovskis. Um, we sh they, we I had them on here with a couple of the brunches that I did. And then we saw uh, James do the kale chips along with Zyda. And then we saw him most recently doing the collard greens. So season three, you're going to see a lot of them, I'm sure. Uh, I have a lot of things, especially now that we're still kind of in that quasi, you know, uh, are you going to have people, can you have people around, can you not have people around, are you doing this and that and the other, so since they are my COVID bubble, uh, we will be um, uh, seeing a lot of them still, uh, as always, uh, gardening coming up, new planting season is starting probably January, and so I'll be out there I'm sure as they will be trying to plant more things and see what I can get uh, growing so uh, a lot of gardening with them we got a couple of tastings in this year I'm very excited about that um, you know we never know what's gonna happen in 2022 because of uh, what's going on there with uh, Omicron uh, aka no crimbo and so hopefully I can get some more in uh, I got in some good poker games uh, I got in some um, a lot of moon games, which we've talked about before. We'll probably talk about, continue to talk about. Uh, I had the horrible occurrence of my tree in my front yard going down and me having to get rid of it. So um, I had to replace it, and I replaced it with the dwarf cherry tree, which may or may not survive. We'll find out more in season three and see what happens. 
uh, made it out to the uh, craft fair back in May that was kind of rained on and uh, we lost the place that it was at so they wound up doing it in the different driveways and so uh, that turned out to be fairly nice uh, they had one again just recently that I wasn't able to make it uh, and they did very well there um, let's see yeah so we uh, we got a lot done uh, here at Javier in the Air we appreciate your continued watching of the show I hope to have more people on next year. Uh, we have some great events coming up. There's going to be a wedding next year that uh, I am going to be a part of. So I'll be able to uh, show. I'm not. I'm not the actual wedding uh, c customers, so to speak, but I am part of the wedding. So just to level set everyone before I start getting calls and text messages, uh, it is not my wedding that I will be partaking in. So, uh, but it will be one that I will be partaking in. So, uh, we'll have a little bit about that towards the end of the year. Um, and so we'll, we'll see what else we can get. I have, I'm doing something that, um, is on my bucket list and I'm getting it done before the end of this year, 2021. And it won't, you won't see it until 2022, uh, on my show, but it's something that I've, uh, talked about. I may not have mentioned here on the show, something that I've had an interest in for years and years and years and finally thanks to some friends of mine pushed me into breaking out of my introverted uh, COVID shell and I will be doing that um, uh, in about a week and a half maybe uh, a little less than two weeks and so I'll be doing that uh, and partaking in that and it'll be a lot of fun and so you'll get to see it here on the show it may even get incorporated into the uh, opening. So I'm looking to change my opening for season three. I, you saw that I changed it the last couple of weeks to that fantastic worldview uh, item that came with the edi editing software that I have. So we'll see if that's going to continue or if I have something else. I'm always looking to try to do some uh, something new. Um, I also want to give a shout out that I didn't get to see, um, but I wanted to give a shout out to my nephew Max. He was able to do a quick gig at the Round Rock Tavern, um, and I'll see if I can throw it on here towards the end so that you can get a, uh, a glimpse of some of his great uh, working the fingers, uh, channeling the spirit of the Ramones, in my opinion, uh, just visually, uh, and a great song that he was playing as well. So uh, great stage present, did a great job, uh, and uh, hope to see more, hope to be able to get out there and see him uh, the next time he plays. So that'll be fun so all right so let's um we talked a little bit about what se uh, season three is going to hold for us as far as as far as we know this is what i'll be doing there's always a chance for new things popping up uh always a chance for another snowmageddon another newspaper reporter uh, coming to interview me about it there's always a chance for a uh surprise guest there's always a chance of there being actual uh, an entire show dedicated to a pumpkin or perhaps another type of flavor beer review that we've had in the past. And uh, you'll see a lot more Brother Rob. You might see some more uh, other neighbors. You might see some more old friends of mine from um, years gone by who have not uh, made it out and about for some of the tastings that I had this year. So we'll, we'll certainly do that. And then I'm going to try to, uh, depending on, of course, uh, you know, Omicron, a.k.a. No Crimbo, um, whether I'll be able to get out more and do some more things uh, on my bucket list, maybe, but definitely some more things so that we can keep this, uh, keep Javier in the air uh, spiced up, more interactive with with people and not just seeing me here sitting here doing this 24-7 uh, every episode. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I'll try to change things up as much as I can and so let's have a good time with season three I can't believe season two is already coming to an end uh, so sad so sad um, so let's see what um, I have some more things here I'm gonna throw out there with some uh, pictures and whatnot so let's uh, let's get to it and see what comes up I hope you enjoy it and then when we come back I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, what's going on uh, in the world the past week or so 
while avoiding politics and religion because that's my thing here and um, talk a little bit about a um, I brought it up before but another a great um, food drive location that you can donate food to and then also we will have our beer that I talked about a lot of different beer in this episode so hang on it's gonna be a fun one let's see what's going on so this is the calm before the storm the last poker game at Javier's house for 2021 we're going to try to introduce a bomb pot. We're going to have a, um, actually, I don't remember what you call it, but well, we're going to have it. Um, and basically a mark where, um, I'm not sure what to call it, but uh, we're going to pick someone. And if someone, whoever gets that person out wins an extra cash prize for the night. So got the chips. I got my chips ready to go. We play here with $2,000 in chips. There's a buy-in. None of it goes to the house. And we are just going to live it up tonight. So last poker game of 2021. Okay, so welcome to Javier in the Year 2022 events and places to come. This is just to kind of showcase uh, some of the things I did in the past and some of the things I'll probably be doing in the future. Here's a good shot of a half-eaten plate. From Dos Marys. I was just there yesterday um, and it's really good. So I'll be hitting a lot more uh, restaurants in 2022, or at least hope to. Here's a shot of the garden pre uh, with just a little bit growing in it. So um, what what's going to happen this year? We don't know. Um, definitely like to try to get some of the unusual seeds that I got a hold of and try to actually get them to plant this year. So we'll see what happens. What about this fantastic piece from uh, back in August with the uh, when I was burning the stump? Uh, Will we have more um, really cool effects like this? This is just due to my camera itself, but I think it's going to turn out cool, and we'll see more in 2022. So here's something that I was hoping to get from the garden uh, this year. I have seeds. So uh, talking about the unusual seeds, I have this seed, these seeds that will grow with purple flesh for the uh, watermelon so let's hope that will happen along with uh, also have regular seeds for um, the melons that just have regular red flesh in there like as you see normally in most of the watermelons you get at the store so uh, all that and a lot more so we'll see what happens in the garden and then on my walks around uh, the neighborhood I get to see little things like this crazy guy who actually wasn't that little and uh, what am I gonna see uh, in 2022 uh, let's find out. I think it's going to be something hopefully unique and exciting and hopefully you might actually see me walking in different places in 2022. So uh, stay tuned for all that and a lot lot more. Okay so what was going to be let's see what I did this week became let's what's going to happen in 2022. So things are always on the change here. So that's something that uh, I was uh, brought to my attention as well maybe to have things a little bit more structured going into season three but who knows maybe we will maybe we won't it, it really depends on what happens uh throughout the year so you saw some of those things so go, to go back to uh the poker game poker game turned out really good i think i talked a little bit about it in uh, the episode a couple weeks ago uh and the word i was trying or the term i was trying to find was bounty so the bounty would be the person who we picked to the whoever gets the, him out of the game altogether doesn't have any more chips they would win a cash prize so the, it turned out it was james pavlovsky neighbor of farmer james uh, two doors down um and it turns out i got him out so i won the cash prize anyway i didn't win the night but i did win uh the bounty so i had a five dollar prize i gave myself the five dollar prize i was very happy about it so it turned out to be a great night uh, so we're looking at, like I said, more poker games coming up and we're looking at a lot more things. So if you own a business, a mom and pop business in the Cedar Park area or anywhere else in the country and you'd like to be on my show, please uh, leave me a note on this episode's comments. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Javier in the Air. 
if you have me on Facebook, you can send me a message. If you have me on Instagram, you can send me a message. If you have me on anything else, you can send me a message. Or you can even send me an email. Yes, I still have email accounts. Some of them quite old. So, uh, we're talking a little bit about what's going to happen in 2022. And I think, as you've been seeing the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to get some really... Some really good Zen moments out here for us. Uh, something a little bit different. Uh, I've had some great feedback on the Zen moments that I've been doing. So I'm, I, I'm excited about that. And we'll continue to prov- bring more Zen moments. I have one for today. I was out for my walks. I was out early. Uh, no, well, not too early. But I was out for my walk today. Uh, and again, uh, one of my favorite places to walk is to head up. Anderson Mill from 620 so you go up and and it kind of almost continually is an incline and then at one point it becomes really steep and I think you'll see that in the Zen moment uh, the the video there of that Um, then I stopped at Old Mill and took Old Mill back to El Salido Parkway and then back home so for those of you who don't know that is about a 3.25 mile walk uh, so, I, as I mentioned before, since my birthday, I've been trying to walk at least two miles every day. Uh, I upped it about three weeks ago and started doing at least 2.2 or 2.15 to 2.25 miles a day every day. There are a couple of days that I missed. Um, not too many, but um, since this is December 19th, uh, we're looking at 49 days, and I have probably walked 44 of them. So at minimum, 88 miles that I've walked so far since November 1st. But possibly a little bit more, like I said, because I've been ranging from about 2 miles to about 2 and a quarter miles. And then sometimes I do long walks like I did today for 3 and a quarter. So for those of you who may not know... Um, I started to add this uh, great health component, exercise component to my normal working out routine. And so I think that is a great um, part and addition to uh, staying healthy. I don't know if uh, you guys get out there and walk, but you need to get out and walk. And so you need to keep doing that, especially the older that we all get. Uh, the more you stay active, the more you stay mobile, the better it is for your body, your mind, and your health overall. So uh, get out there and walk. Um, so before we go into the Zen moment, I know we just talked about it. Before we go into the Zen moment, um, I don't know what some of y'all's rituals are for Christmas, Xmas, the holidays, Hanukkah, whichever... Uh, all right, and whichever event you may celebrate around this time of year, um, I'm open to any and all of them. However, we were talking about quote-unquote Christmas movies because that is how they are termed uh, when it comes to a lot of the movies that are out there uh, from the past 40, 50, 60, 70 years even. So uh, we talked uh, last night about some of the favorite Christmas movies. Now, I know everybody has a favorite uh, or favorites, and so... I wanted to get a, a good gist of li- and list of some of the top movies that people watch. Now, um, uh, we were talking last night, some of the big ones that a lot of people know, Die Hard, Scrooged, Miracle on 42nd Street, any of the Scrooges, by the way, including the Muppet Scrooge, um, the uh, Home Alone, um, what were some of the other ones? Uh, I think those were those were the big ones I covered uh, all that um, there was a couple other I can't remember but then there were some more obscure ones like Santa versus the men from Mars uh, which was a, um, a silent film or not quite a silent film but it was definitely uh, a really much older older film and then my personal favorite which isn't the film which isn't a movie but it was uh, it came out on I want to say HBO when it was when it originally aired, and I think it was 1978, um, was Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. The quintessential of what makes the Muppets the Muppets. 
even has an opening by Kermit the Frog. If you haven't watched it, uh, or it's been a while since you watch it, I recommend you watch it every year. I watch it every year. It is fantastic. It really does, uh, I don't know, it just warms the cockles of my heart. Uh, and I think you would enjoy it as well. I think your kids would enjoy it. It's a classic. I think it's never going to go out of, uh, you know, it's never going to go stale. It's never going to be not um, valid for any for any kid, even for adults. Emma Daughter's Jug Band Christmas. You can find it all over the place now. It's fantastic. Okay, so... Um, there and so I want to hear you know what are some of your favorite uh, Christmas movies? Let me know. Um, I'll I'll try to get them out in some way, shape, or form before the end of the year. Um, and then season three will will have something brand new and to talk about. And we're gonna have lists and we're gonna have questions and we're gonna have surveys and it's gonna be a great time. So let's get to our Zen moment so like I said I mentioned earlier uh, on my walk my 3.25 walk today um, or roughly 3.25 miles um, I got in a nice view it rained hard last night uh, early morning little in the middle of the day rained again last night and it's supposed to rain again tonight but I'm not worried about that but when you have a, a nice heavy rain like that, it clears out the sky. So the sky was absolutely clear and beautiful. It was really sharp. Um, some some people are even like, wow, my eyesight is better. It's not better. It's just all the garbage that's in the air that normally the pollens and the pollutants and the contaminants and everything that's in the air gets flocked out by the hard rain. And it's been a little bit, and it got a little bit colder there too. So the big combination of cold and the water flocked out just about everything that was hanging in the air, which is why, especially after a uh, hard snow, the same way the next day when the sun comes out, uh, or whenever the sun comes out, depending on the snow, um, everything looks so bright and crisp and clear. And that is because it has flocked everything out. Uh, that was in the air. So uh, anyway, so here is a um, Zen moment and then uh, a little poem by Jay Anderson about walking. So uh, check it out. We can solve many things if we just get out to walk. I walk in the light of day. I walk when it is dark. You walk when you want air. You walk when you want to get away. My feet, my legs, drive me toward a destination. Perhaps it is known, perhaps it is not. But one walks because we can, and one walks a little or a lot. It is not the destination but the event that one walks. There are times when it is not for you that you walk, but perhaps on the behalf of others that you do. Places, things, times, people, all can be reached by driving one foot forward and on and on and on, making us do and think and attune ourselves with nature. We can solve many things if we just got out to walk. And there you have it, our Zen moment for the week, for uh, the final episode of Javier in the Air, episode 46. So, uh, real quick, I, do, I don't want to stay too long because I know this is going longer than our normal, uh, which again, some of the feedback I got is to try to keep it under 35, 40 minutes, uh, I'll, I'll try to make it a nice tight 30 if I can, uh, I always miss it, uh, or I go really short on it, so anyway, so um, thanks again to Scott at the Brutique, uh, fantastic bottle shop here in Cedar Park, Texas, if you haven't had a chance to go out there, go out there, say hi to Scott, tell him Javier sent you, and that you're looking for whatever beer you're looking for. He is very knowledgeable. He has been in the business for a long time. He will point you in the right direction. He has a lot of fantastic beers out there. I have a tendency nowadays to just kind of go by look, by what the can says on there. Uh, I am uh, i won't consider myself an aficionado, but I am a lover of drinking beer now of all, of all sorts, just about. We may have a couple that you see here that I don't necessarily like, but... 
I get out there and I try. So that's half the battle. If you're interested in drinking beer, not heavily, I don't condone drinking your guts out every day or you know even once a week but if you like to if you enjoy the taste of beer and you like to try different things then this is certainly something up your alley that you can try now they have you know they have a fantastic range of beers and so we were out there on wednesday had some great beer and then i think it was either thursday night or friday uh, a quick beer review with Rob on some uh, some other beer that we had. So uh, let's take a look, and then we'll come back. I'll sum up the season two of 2021 of Javier in the Air, and then we'll go from there. So here we go. It's time for uh, Javier in the Air, a Jita beer review. So here was the uh, Sierra Nevada Celebration Fresh Hop IPA. Uh, really good. I would say I'd probably give this about a six and a half uh, thumbs up. This was the Guinness Chocolate Mint Stout. Really tasted like mint chocolate chip ice cream, uh, old school with a green one. I'd probably give this about a seven and a half. Uh, Sancho, if you know what Sancho is, this had mango, was really tart because I think they added too much lime to it. So I'm only going to give this about a five thumbs up. And then finally we have Sputnik. Uh, Rob was out there at their uh, release of Sputnik and this was really good. I would give this uh, probably about a seven. What is it, man? What is it? Oh, this is PV Fusion Technique by Weathered Souls, and it is Weathered Souls out of San Antonio. Great little brewery. It's an imperial stout with coconut, a brownie fudge, and peanut butter, 11.5% alcohol, and it is delicious. Not cheap, not cheap, like almost 50 bucks for a four pack, but it's good. I don't know if it's 50 bucks good, but it's really good. So how many thumbs is it? Uh, that is a nine. Nine. Nine thumbs. Nine Very thumbs easy. up. And I love a good peanut butter stout. So. All right, so the bro is a good lover of peanut butter stout. I am too, but I'm not as much lover as he is about it. So um, let me try. That is good. That is good. Um, I think it's one of the best peanut butter stouts that I've had. Um, it, to me, it tastes like those... Um, I guess they're not not nutty buddy. What are they called? The peanut cookies. Yeah, those they're, are nutter butters. Nutter butters. Nutter yeah, butters. Yeah. Those are fantastic. Tastes just like that, but not overly sweet. So just yes. just the right amount. So I'm gonna have to go with I'm gonna have to go with eight and a half thumbs up, which is fantastic for a peanut butter stout. So uh, there you have it uh, from Weathered Souls out of San Antonio. Uh, if you'd like us to test other ones, Weathered Souls. Just send it your, um, our way because uh, we're from San Antonio. So fantastic. Way to go. Okay, and there you have it. A full episode and the final episode of Season 2, 2021, Javier in the Air. So I hope you enjoyed these 46 episodes. Um, I've been trying to get one out every every weekend. Don't know if that's going to continue or not. Uh, I'd like to think it will, and I think it will. There may be some times where I may miss due to unforeseen circumstances, technical difficulties, whatnot. Uh, but I hope to continue with it. Uh, maybe in 2022 I'll get a sponsor. You never know. Um, maybe there will be more white in my beard. You never know. Things just happen. Um, also, I hope you enjoyed my little uh, acapella um, opening for the beer review. Uh, I'm going to try to start adding some more music to it. Also, as, uh, as I said, I'm always looking for sponsors. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, the team out at Brew Teak, Scott and Jana, as always, fantastic. Y'all do a great job. Y'all have provided me beers throughout the the almost three years that I've been posting things out here. Two years, definitely, of Javier in the Air, so I appreciate that. Uh, it's been really fantastic. I uh, appreciate all the beer uh, lovers out there and some of the great feedback I've gotten from them. Um, also great feedback talking about how I'm all over the scale when it comes to uh, beer. I used to do a lot of IPAs because I, I, I still love my IPAs, but I realize that not everyone does. So I like to throw a lot of stuff out there. So, uh, and those of you who are probably going to ask what Sancho means, uh, look it up. For those of you who know what Sancho means, 
Hả? Hả? Ok, so um, you'll, you'll figure it out So Coming to the end of the year I hope uh, everybody has a good uh, Xmas holidays And I say Xmas because they cover uh, All the holidays are out there um, Hanukkah and Christmas And uh, any pagan holidays that you may follow um, If you're fo- you know If you uh, are bad Krampus will get you um, and so there's just a lot of things that cover this time of year. So I hope you enjoy them. Um, and, and let me know if anybody does a Yule log, please send me some video. I'd love to see uh, old school tradition of the Yule log and see if, if, if anybody out there does it. If anybody knows anybody out there that does it, see if you can get me a picture or a short video of what they do. If anybody makes figgy pudding, uh, I'd love to see a recipe of it, and I'd love to see what uh, what it comprised of. I'm sure I know it's got figs in it, but I'd like to know what it is. I'm going to try to maybe make something on Christmas Day that would be more old school, traditional. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get away with it or not, but I'm, maybe I'm going to try it and see what I get. Um... If anybody still makes capiotada, capiotada, if you know what that is, my mom used to make it, still does every now and then. Uh, I'm not a big, big fan of it because it's got cheese in it. But you can make it without the cheese, but then it's not really capiotada. So um, if you do that, uh, either send me a video or send me a sample, whatever you want. Um, also, thanks to uh, Nasha Nibs out there uh they provided me with some great fantastic um christmas fudge and these cool little uh it looks like old school metal lunch boxes but they're only about that big about that wide um fantastic fudge so if you're into that uh check online on facebook for nosh and nibs uh sonya and hexa run that and they do a fantastic job out there uh so I hope everybody enjoyed 2021. I know we've we've stumbled. You know, we thought we were coming out of this um, flu, this virus, this coronavirus, this COVID. Uh, hopefully, and I know most of the people I know and care about got vaccinated. Good for you. Um, I did as well. I got my booster two weeks ago. Felt like a champ. Um, didn't have any real problems. So I hope if you have the opportunity to get the booster, please do. Um, you're not just doing it for yourself, you're doing it for others. So um, what you would want your grandparents and parents to be protected, um, and certainly others do as well. So don't think about it as don't think about it selfishly as uh, I don't want to do it because I don't want to do it. Um, I, and I know I'm very selfish on a lot of things, but when it comes to making sure that my family and my parents are healthy be- and I'm not going to give them something, it's totally worth it to me to get vaccinated for it. Um, so I'm also going to try to uh, maybe add in some motion uh, camera shots. Uh, I'm going to try to get my bike uh, fixed and going. So um, uh, tr- back to the traditional uh, foods. If anybody does an unusual food that their family does or a dish, I don't mean unusual as in like it's weird, but you know, or but if it is, then that'll work too. But I mean something that uh, perhaps your family does that uh, you notice that other families don't, and it's something that you traditionally eat around the holidays. Then be sure and let me know. Uh, I think it would be great. I'm, I might try to also do uh, something. I don't want to say what it is because last time I did and I didn't do it, I felt bad. So there's two things I want to try to maybe do on Christmas Day. So uh, wish me luck on that. We'll see how it goes. So like I said, I'm going to bring something a little short and sweet to uh, Javier in the air for probably on Christmas Day, maybe Christmas Eve. But that's it. That's it for 2021. 2021 in the books. Uh, I appreciate everyone watching, subscribing. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of a following, which I appreciate each and every one of you out there. Uh, maybe one of these days we can all meet and have a beer and celebrate Javier in the air. Uh, good luck to everyone. Have a good week. If you're working this whole week, I only work on Monday. But if you're working this whole week, uh, hang in there. 
the uh the holidays are coming up it's already a, you know christmas is a week away so and then new year's right after that so have a good time have a good day i hope you enjoy your time with friends and or family and or anything that you do and i'll see you again in 2022 so take care everyone have a good one thanks a lot